Hi class. So this screencast today is how to determine the meaning of domain specific words with pictures. What will happen in this exercise is that we will be given two terms in an article and we have to decide what the picture is talking about, which term the picture is referring to. So you notice that I have two screens up. I have my IXL screen and I have my note taking screen. I'm going to take some notes just to make sure I keep the facts straight as I read. I encourage you to do the same or you can write it down. If you don't do it on your laptop, you can write it down on a scratch piece of paper. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read that first paragraph. Organisms that can make their own energy from non-living resources, such as the sun, are known as producers or audiotropes. So I'm going to write audiotropes are, they're known as producers, as producers, And they can make their own food from non living resources. So that's the first term I've come across audiotropes. I'll continue reading. The Greek, the Greek preface auto means self. And the suffix troph means nourishment. Thus, an audiotroph can produce its own nourishment, as when a plant uses photosynthesis to obtain energy from the sun. So I'm going to write myself another little note, like a plant. All right. I'm now going to read paragraph number two. Organisms that eat living or once living things obtain their energy are known as consumers or heterotrophs. So I'm going to write heterotrophs. So they eat living or non-living All right, so heterotrophs eat living or non-living things. So I'll keep reading. The Greek prefix hetero means different. This means that a heteroph cannot produce its own energy on its own. Instead, heterotrophs consume other organisms, plants, animals for energy. Cannot make energy on its own. All right. So now that I've read, I have two things. I have audiotrophs like plants, and I have heterotrophs. <laughs> I know that one of my favorite things to eat is wings. So I am definitely a heterotroph because I love to eat wings. So let's look here at our picture. What picture do they give us? Ooh, a polar bear. Now, let me look back at my notes. So audiotrophs are plants. They don't need to eat living or non-living things. A heterotroph definitely needs to eat living or non-living things, like plant salad, steak. Ooh. So I see a polar bear. Well, I know that polar bears eat fish, seals, another grass, other things like that. So I'm going to pick heterotroph. Awesome. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do another one just so I drive home clarity for this skill. Same thing applies. I am going to look at this text, pick out the two different things they're talking about, and then show which pi the picture goes with which skill. So let's begin to, to read. 
Molecules tend to move from areas of high concentration, more molecules for the space, to areas of low concentration until they are evenly spaced. This movement is called diffusion. So diffusion. is the movement of molecules, all right? The fusion is the movement of uh, molecules. They said there was high diffusion and it's for more molecules for the space. And then they said there was low diffusion and that's where and that's when low equals fewer molecules for the space all right so that's diffusion so i will keep reading if you spray air freshener or perfume in the room the perfume molecules will tend to move toward areas which they are less concentrated which is how the, the scent spreads. Oh, okay, so if I spray, if I spray my air freshener into the room, it's really concentrated when it comes out of the spray nozzle, so then it diffuses, it ends up going where the perfume isn't, all right? So let's look for our second term. I see it right here, it says osmosis, osmosis, so osmosis, is a term related, but more specific kind of movement. The movement of certain kinds of molecules across semi-permeal membranes. So, uh, so osmosis is a specific kind of movement. And it says molecules across semi open membranes. I will keep reading. Many, many substances cannot move across semi permeal cell membranes, but water molecules can. So I'm going to put in here. Ooh, Water can do this. So water can do osmosis. Many, um, the process of pickling vegetables involves osmosis. Salt is highly concentrated in salt water than it is in vegetables. For this reason, when a vegetable is placed in a jar of salt water, the water molecules will pass via osmosis from areas of low salt concentration inside the vegetable cells to areas of higher salt concentration, the salt water surrounding the vegetables. This leaves the vegetables crispier. All right, so I have diffusion and I have osmosis. Now osmosis was pulling one thing out of another and diffusion is pretty much spreading a substance around. So I'm going to look down here at my picture that I've been given. All right. So it asks me which term matches the picture. All right. So I got three different pictures of jars of water. I have this first one where it looks like they poured a blue dye in. Then I see it kind of mixing around. And then I see it fully mixed into the water. All right, so I'm going to look back at my notes. Diffusion, lower molecules of space, more molecules for the space. And this is a specific kind where the molecules can move from one cell to another. Well, I don't really see any pictures of cells. So I'm going to look back. I see that in diffusion, it says that just like air freshener 
um, disperses. It looks like this chemical is doing the same thing. It starts off right here, but then it sees this open areas of water. So the dye moves around and it keeps moving around until all the water is covered. So I can definitely tell that these are, this is pictures of diffusion. I'm going to go ahead and click on diffusion. And there we go. All right, you are going to do the same thing that I just did for the rest of the problems under this skill. It is very important that you take your time, you read about each thing being presented, and then you look at the picture and see which term the picture is representing. This is very, very, very good with skill comprehension. So you're gonna read, and it wants to comprehend, what did you read? Can you place a picture with something you've read? So take your time, read for understanding. Don't just read it to get through it. And I know that you will crush this skill. All right, it's your turn to do it. So now copy my steps and go ahead and get you 100 in this skill.